Alright, next let's go over how do we do the exact same thing that we just did, multiply and divide complex numbers, uh, but the number is given in a trigonometric form. So as we see here, z1 is, and we've got this r cosine plus i sine theta in the form, same thing on z2 over here. Um, we can find z1 times z2 this way. r1 times r2 times cosine theta1 plus theta2 plus i sine theta1 plus theta2. Uh, very simply, we multiply the r, we add the thetas. It's the process for multiplying two complex numbers in a trig form. If we want to divide two complex numbers, z1 divided by z2, we do just the exact opposite things here. We divide the r values. And then instead of adding the thetas, we subtract the thetas. Okay, so very, very similar. Just we're going to divide the r's, subtract the thetas. There's our formulas for multiplying and dividing complex numbers in a trigonometric form. This example says find the product of the complex numbers. Um, clearly these are in trigonometric form. The, I mean, dead giveaways, you've got sines and cosines involved, so it's got to be a trig form. So we're asked to find z1 times z2. We're going to do it the way that that last slide showed us. We're going to begin by multiplying the r values. I'll just write it all out here. And then we're going to add the thetas. So we're going to add pi over 4 plus 5 pi over 3. Same addition for the second term. Okay, so the product is equal to 15 times cosine. We need to add those together. Let's do that kind of as scratch work here. We're going to add pi over 4 plus, plus 5 pi over 3. We'd make a common denominator be 12. So this would be 3 pi over 12. This one times 4 would be 20 pi over 12. If we add those together, the result would be 23 pi over 12 plus i sine 23 pi over 12. That is the product. The original numbers were given in a trigonometric form, so it is perfectly fine to answer in a simplified trigonometric form. Well, let's go ahead and do a division example with complex numbers, again, in a, in a trigonometric form. When we divide, we simply divide the r values, and we subtract the theta. So it always be, this is theta 1, this is theta 2, so this is going to be 220 minus 115 plus i sine 220 minus 115. So the 5 over 2 is perfectly fine as 5 halves, as it's a reduced simplified fraction. Uh, you could make it a decimal 2.5 and it wouldn't be wrong. Cosine of, this is going to be 105 degrees plus i sine 105 degrees. There's the division of our two complex numbers. Finally, Dumois' theorem uh, gives us a way to, we'll say, simplify powers of complex numbers. Uh, for example, if I were to give you 8 plus 3i to the sixth power, well, we know that would be 8 plus 3i times 8 plus 3i times etc. until we get to the sixth one. That's a lot of multiplying binomials together, replacing i squareds as negative ones, and kind of repeating and doing again and again and again. It'd take a long time to multiply that together. 
Um, De Moivre's theorem allows us to do this very, very quickly. We have to be, though, in a trigonometric form. Okay, so if we can get the complex number into a trigonometric form, De Moivre's theorem gives us the way to do this type of operation really just in a matter of seconds, real, real quick. Um, so De Moivre's theorem looks like this. Any complex number Let's let z equal r cosine theta plus i sine theta is just your trig form of a complex number. Then z to the n power is r to the n power times cosine of n theta plus i sine n theta. I'll even put little parentheses around these. So you can see the location of the ends there where we apply the power. Very simply, the r value gets the exponent as an exponent. The theta value gets the exponent but as a scalar product right here. All right, let's try that with one example. All right, this final example asks us to find the power of a complex number. Uh, you can see it's to the 12th power, so that would be an absolute nightmare to have to do that um, times itself 12 times. Um, so we're going to use De Moivre's theorem. We have to first uh, put the number in trig form. So this goes back to one of our very first example slides. To get it into trig form, we need the r and the theta. Okay, so the r value comes from Pythagorean's theorem. It is the square root of negative 1 squared plus square root of 3 squared. That becomes square root of 1 plus 3, which is 2. Theta is tan inverse of, we want the b value over the a value. Let's see, the point that is that is the one half comma square root of three over two point. So your calculator would tell you because it's negative that that would be um, negative pi over three is what the calculator would show um, because this point, let's do real quick just right here, this point would plot negative one up square root of three, it would plot into the second quadrant your calculator has resulted in this angle. We need to add 180 to this. We're going to add pi to that. So our angle theta is going to be 2 pi over 3. So we have an r value. We have a theta value, which means this problem is essentially this. It is going to be r and then cosine theta plus i sine theta. We want it to the twelfth power. Okay, so De Moivre's theorem tells us that we take the r value to the twelfth and then the angle 2 pi over 3 gets multiplied by the twelve. So 2 raised to the twelfth power 2 raised to the 12th power is 4,096. And we want cosine, let's see, 12 times 2 is 24 divided by 3 is 8. So it's cosine of 8 pi plus i sine. It's the same multiplication of 8 pi. Uh, so I do need to figure out what cosine and sine of 8 pi are. So I'm going to use my knowledge of the circle to figure those out. The cosine of 8 pi is the x value at 8 pi, which is 1. Sine of 8 pi is the y value at 8 pi, which is 0. That goes away, so it's 4096 times 1, 4096, is the result of taking this complex number to the 12th power. And sure, that was a lot of work to get the r and the theta and then run through De Moivre's theorem. But that was much, much faster than actually having to take this times itself, you know, 12 sets of parentheses and then multiply together.